So I just want to share this. I read this, Reader's Digest, so it's, you know, it's something we can all hear. <laughs> so a guy says, I recently picked a new primary care physician. And after two visits and exhaustive lab tests, he said I was doing fairly well for my age. So a little concerned about that comment, I asked him, I couldn't resist, well, do you think I'll live to be 90? Well, he asked, do you smoke or drink beer or wine? Well, oh no, I replied, I'm not doing drugs either. Then he asked, do you eat ribeye steaks and barbecued ribs? No, no, my other doctor said that all red meat is very unhealthy. Do you spend a lot of time in the sun? Do you play golf, hike, or bicycle? Oh, no, no, I don't. He asks, well, do you gamble, drive fast cars, or have a lot of sex? No, no, I don't do any of those things. He looked at me and said, then why do you want to live to be 90? <laughs> so I think that's an appropriate thought as we prepare ourselves to release all of those things in 2019 that we did not find serving us to make way for those things that we intend to bring into our lives in 2020. This is uh, what, uh, what we call the annual mental and spiritual house cleaning. A time of endings and a time of new beginnings. Just a quick question. Anybody here doing a burning bowl for the very first time? All right, well, welcome. And we will give exact instructions so you don't feel, don't worry about how to do it. We've got this all covered. So the burning bowl ceremony of release is a sacred ritual. And we do it today, but we can actually use this ceremony anytime throughout the year when we want to release negativity from our lives. Because when we release negativity, we, we are made whole. We are washed clean in the love and peace of spirit. As St. Paul reminds us in the book of Romans, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, transformed by the renewing of our minds, so that you may, be, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So we do this to renew our minds. And Notice what St. Paul is telling us. We do this through our own choice. We say yes to this renewal. We don't wait for God to tell us, we take the initiative. So, as we look back on this past year, 2019, what do we see? What, what did we hold in mind and in our minds and hearts that brought us goodness? Which of those beliefs that helped bring us goodness can we build upon in the coming year to increase the goodness in our lives, to bring us more love, more life, more health, more prosperity, more joy. On the other hand, where did we miss the mark in 2019? What could we have done a little better? How can we be more, what can we do to be more kind to ourselves? What do we need to let go of? Whom do we still need to forgive? Or from whom do we still need to ask forgiveness? More importantly, what can we do now as this new year is arriving to more closely live from our divine essence? After all, this divine essence is our greatest treasure, is it not? It's our greatest power. It's the source of all the good that we wish to attract to us for the rest of the days of our living container available to us after the service. So to make this annual ritual, this house cleaning ritual, most effective, we want to do three things. First, we want to be willing to forgive ourselves for all of our mistakes. Not just some of them, for all of them. The past is over and we let forgiveness wipe away all of our tears, all of our fears, all of our sorrows. So number one, be willing to forgive ourselves for our mistakes. Number two, be willing to forgive everyone else. Again, no asterisk, so we don't get to be willing to forgive some people but not others. It doesn't work that way. And then number three, we need to be willing to tell a new story for ourselves, to prepare a new table 
for the new feast that's coming up in 2020. I mean, don't we agree? Unless we let go of our past, there will be no mystery about our future. Our lives will be just like the movie Groundhog Day, where every day is the same as the day before, and we're stuck on the rerun. Isn't it wonderful now that we actually have a process there whereby we can leave behind resentment, anger, fear, guilt, that's a good one for me, what ifs, insecurity, inferiority? Isn't it exciting really to think instead about new possibilities, new adventures, new connections of love, new friends, new family? To experience healing and wholeness, we have to be willing to give up our attachment to the small s self of us. I choose to give up the attachment to little Marty that's made mistakes, experienced failure, suffered illness, gone through poverty, messed up, felt victimized, been betrayed or rejected, once felt unpopular, has been wrongly accused, has not gotten the love. Who of us wants to unblock emotions, release pain, gain new insight, feel lighter, be open to more intimate relationships, feel compassion, feel secure, achieve peace of mind, have more happiness, to begin again, to stand in strength, as Connie read from our Advent book. The world has finished with our past, if we have. So let's start with an affirmation. The world has finished with my past, and so have I. The world has finished with my past, and so have I. Together, the world has finished with my past, and so have I. So now we're going to get to the work. We're going to use a three-step process where we offer up the things that no longer hold a healthy or meaningful purpose in our lives. And the three areas of release that we're going to consider are in these categories, personal, community and family, and global. So I'll guide you through each part. You may have to write, uh, you may have more to write in one area than another, and that's okay. But overall, we'll make sure everyone has a time allotted to be enough for us to complete our release. So are, you, are we ready to be transformed by spirit? Answer is yes. <laughs> Unless the answer is no, which is okay. All right, so everyone has a piece of flash paper. Does anyone not have their packet? Okay, we've got a couple of... It's in the envelope. Did you get the envelope? Okay, so there should be flash paper in your envelope. It's a little... It's a little... Yes. I know, you have to write real tiny. I didn't get one. Is there, is there an extra? Yes, thank you. Anybody need a packet? Okay, so I think everyone has a packet. So, flash paper is very special and it's very tiny. So we're going to write tiny. And we can write on both sides of our flash paper. Okay, so I'm going to write it, I'm going to write lengthwise. That's me. Some people may want to write this way. But at the very top, let's write, I release. And you can use your uh, Wings of Prayer book to write on to give you a hard thing surface. I release. So category personal. 
Begin writing down those thoughts, feelings, attitudes, beliefs, and actions that no longer serve you in your own life. Anything that prevents you from living your highest potential, the full glory of the Christ presence. This may include fears, illness, resentments, anger, guilt, shame, weight, addictions, smoking, sugar, alcohol, drugs, depression, belief in lack, feelings of inferiority or old conversation tapes in our heads, I'm not good enough. I'll never be successful. I can't find my true purpose. Actions may, or beliefs that may no longer serve us may be, I'm too old, too tall, too fat, too thin, too dumb, too inadequate, slow, too fast, too hyper, boring, all of the twos, the terrible twos. So let's take some time now in sacred silence to write out those personal obstacles that you want to release. It's okay if we don't get every single thing that we want to release. We're going to let everything that we've written down stand for all the things that we choose to acknowledge that we're going to release. That's in the category of personal. The next category of things that we want to release are in the realm of category and family to what we're calling community release. In this category, community could be your church community, your neighborhood, your political community, whether that's local government, state, federal, Congress, president, uh, your community of family and friends, community of volunteer groups that you might belong to. We take time now in silence to consider ourselves in relationship to others. Jesus told us the greatest commandments are to love God and to love our neighbor as ourself. So let us consider what we are willing to let go of right now in the name of love to contribute to the health of our community, our neighborhood, our family. Is there someone that we felt angered by, abandoned by, betrayed by, or dishonored by? Are we holding on to judgments Criticisms, regrets, unforgiveness for the people in our lives. Could be a brother, a sister, a parent, a child, a co-worker, a boss, an employee, a neighbor. Let's consider those items that we find as obstacles to our being acting in love for the people in our lives. What do we release to build stronger community? And finally, we're going to take a look at global release. When we consider that no person is an island, we can ask ourselves a the question, therefore, who am I in relationship to my nation, my world? Am I holding on to thoughts, feelings, and actions that prevent me from contributing to the wholeness of the world, to the health of the world, to the love and connectedness of our whole planet? Am I holding on to prejudices, racism, sexism, I like this one, ageism. Thoughts of violence, thoughts of repression, hatred, abuse. In the silence, we consider now what are we willing to release in the name of love so that the world can be healed through our commitment, through our release, through our connection to the divine. Global release.
Take another minute to complete this third section. Again, we don't have to get every single thing that we could possibly come up with. We'll now allow all the things that we did write down to stand for all the things that we didn't have time to write down. And now's the time to bring this to the bowl. And what I'd like everybody to do is to take this little paper and twist it in such a way that we leave a little bit of a tail. And for those of you who would like to do it, come on up and drop it in the bowl. And if you don't want to come up, hand it to somebody who is coming up. But I'm going to invite maybe Veldin and Doug to start. Just come on up and drop. Release the release into the bowl. Now we could have a little walking music. In all of these things that we release to the infinite, we have an affirmation that we would like to speak together. So let's close our minds. Let's think of all the things that we wrote down on our little piece of paper. Let's think of all of our brothers and sisters in this room all of us together participating in the same ritual of release. Today I turn away from old habits of limitation. Today I turn away from old habits of limitation. Together? Today I turn away from old habits of limitation. And I replace them with spiritual truth. Together? And I replace them with spiritual truth. God's grace sets me free, together, God's grace sets me free from mistakes of the past and the results of those mistakes, from the mistakes of the past and the results of those mistakes. My life is cleansed, my life is cleansed, and I am transformed by the power of spirit within me, and I am transformed power of spirit within me and for us together as a, as a community we say our lives are cleansed together our lives are cleansed and we are transformed by the power of spirit within us and we are transformed by the power of spirit within us do you want to do this do you want? so I don't know what's going to happen here 
See, that's why he wanted me to do it. <laughs> so, Divine Presence, we thank you for the power of fire to burn away all those things which no longer serve us. And we hereby make room for beauty, joy, and love in 2020. So to celebrate this together, we'd like to sing. Okay. Song is something that brings us to uh, the feeling nature of what we just did. And we're going to sing It's a Special Day, number 221. We just created the special day for us now that we've released all those things that no longer serve us. Shall we rise? consists of writing our affirmative letter on the second piece of paper that we all got. It says, this is the year I affirm, January 2020. Now, as we've released all those things that we no longer need, and by the way, they're gone. It's done. God has got this stuff. We, we send it on flame to the higher power, and it's all released and taken care of. So now we can spend our time focusing on the new, the future, the fresh. So now we're going to take time to think about those things at which we are inviting into our lives in the new year. We we'll write a letter to ourselves affirming two or three of the joys that we want to achieve in this coming 2020. We're going to write them down as if our new good has already happened. So take some time to write this letter. What's going to happen is we're going to ask you to deposit it in the basket in the back and we will then mail it back to everybody at the end of the year so you can check on how well you and Spirit created that which you decided right now today that you want to do. If you don't want to complete this today, you don't have to finish it, but we're going to ask you to put it in the envelope, address the envelope to yourself. We're going to keep a basket on the back table for the month of January, so if you want to take it home and finish it at home, you can do that. But for those of you that would like to work on it now, we're going to take a few minutes to write a letter to ourselves to list those things which we are inviting into our lives, and we're going to write it as if it's now December 2020 and it's already happened. So let's take some moment in the silence to write this letter to ourselves. You ready? <laughs> okay. Wonderful, wonderful, fortunate you. This is the year that your dreams come true. This is the year that your ship comes in. This is the year you find Christ within. 
This is the year you will be glad to live. This is the year you have much to give. This is the year when you know the truth. This is the year when you find new youth. This is the year that will bring happiness. This is the year you will live to bless. Wonderful, wonderful, fortunate you. This is the year that your dreams come true. So this letter that we just wrote for ourselves, we just sealed that to be true as well. This is the year that all these things that we've written down come true. And we know this to be true because the Christ within guarantees that when we ask, we shall receive. When we knock, the door shall be opened unto us. And this is our way of asking and knocking. So we're going to finish by listening to a couple of readings from Scripture that, again, help us seal this into our consciousness. And I'm going to ask Connie to share those with us now. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 through 29. God is not an indifferent bystander. The beloved is actually cleaning house, torching all that needs to burn, and won't quit until it is all cleansed. God himself is fire. From Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 23, you were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, and to be renewed by the spirit, the renewing of the spirit of your mind. You were taught to put away your old self and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Tonight, your life is cleansed and cleared so that only God, only good remains. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come to me and pray, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Now, thank you, thank you Marty. So we're going to finish, uh, before we do our offering, we're going to finish with the affirmation. And the affirmation is this. I am renewed by the cleansing of my mind. Together, I am renewed by the cleansing of my mind. Thank you, God. Amen.